Welcome to the Medical Staff Voice Live. I'm Dr. Stan Froswey, Chief Medical Officer at Community Memorial Health System. And I'm joined today by Dr. Christina Matz. Welcome, Dr. Matz. I understand you're a palliative care doctor. Yes, I am. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. It's really good to have you here. We appreciate you joining us so our medical staff and our community can come to better understand your practice. And we're going to do so by asking you a few questions that will give us some insight and enlighten us about your specialty as well as yourself. So the first thing I would like to understand is tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Where were you trained? Okay. Well, originally I was born in the Midwest, so I'm a bit of a Midwestern girl. Uh, I came to California when I was about 18, so a young adult. I did a lot of my training in California, so I did my undergrad in Central California, went to medical school at UC Irvine, and then I transitioned to the East Coast for a brief period of time. I did my fellowship in emergency medicine initially. Uh, wow. Yeah, and then I decided to come back home because my mom was living here and uh, settled in, in uh, Southern California. Wow, that is that is fascinating because I have a friend of mine, probably know, also was an emergency room doctor and then developed an interest in palliative care medicine. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, um, tell us a little uh, about uh, what is palliative care? Tell us a little bit about the specialty and, uh, and also tell us what interests you have in palliative care. Yeah, so it's a little interesting, uh, kind of a winding road. Um, as I said, I trained in emergency medicine and I was an emergency medicine physician for about 10 years before wow. deciding to pursue a fellowship in palliative care. Um, and a lot of times people are kind of shocked by that because they say, well, how did you go from emergency medicine and high excitement and procedures to sitting at the bedside and having a goals of care discussion? But in fact, it's really, there's not as much of a difference as you might think. You know, in emergency medicine, we take care of patients who are seriously ill or have life-limiting illness. And that's actually the same patient population that we take care of in palliative care. Very interesting. So, um, you know, we have found that palliative care is incredibly helpful for primary care physicians. and. Um, we were first introduced to hospice, of course, and then palliative care came along and how fortunate we are that palliative care has come out of the hospital and into the outpatient setting where you're involved. Um, but I will tell you, it's sometimes confusing for primary care doctors like myself to understand, should I get a hospice consult or a palliative care consult or just start with palliative care and let them decide if hospice what what's the uh, what's the right way yeah yeah it's a good question this is a question i think we're asked a lot i like to think of it as kind of a continuum so when you have a patient diagnosed with initially with you know a, a serious or life-limiting illness um, that may be the appropriate time to get palliative care involved so an early palliative care referral Especially so, for instance, an oncology patient who's going to, you know, undergo curative treatment. It doesn't have to even have to be palliative chemotherapy, but curative treatment. That might be an appropriate time. And so at the initial uh, diagnosis, and then as the disease progresses, you think about, well, you know, where should we kind of make that transition, right? Because here's the initial referral, and at the end of the trajectory is the the end of the patient's life and it's really within that last six months that you look at making the referral to hospice okay that makes a lot of sense to me so we it sounds like we can't go wrong by getting an early palliative care consult as soon as we think about it the earlier the better wow that right. that's very interesting so um palliative care provides people with kind of support, guidance as to how they uh, can optimize or live their life the best they can. Is that the basic idea? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's patient-centered care, really patient and family-centered care. It's uh, focusing on quality of life. 
So oftentimes that may mean aggressive symptom management, say for patients undergoing treatment for cancer. Like nausea or diarrhea. Exactly, or cancer-related pain. Ah, yes. Yeah. Um, additionally, though, I think you know it's important to recognize that, that there are other sides of the coin, meaning it's not just the symptoms of the physical symptoms, but also the emotional, right? And the psychosocial distress that patients can experience. So we're really looking at the person as a whole and addressing all of those different realms. And because you are so familiar with the resources available for all of those palliative opportunities, you're able to make those and identify what the patient actually needs. Yeah. Yeah, one of the unique um, features of our team is that we have a full interdisciplinary uh, team where we have uh, palliative care nurses, palliative care social workers, we have chaplaincy. So what really is a complement of uh, disciplines to help address those different, you know, stressors. What a wonderful service for our patients and our community. Absolutely. That is really impressive. Absolutely. So uh, uh, a question I ask most of uh, my physician colleagues, but may or may not pertain, and you can clarify that, do we ever ask for palliative care with children? Yes, so, wow. you know, I think it's not um, done as often in the community as say at a, you know, tertiary care center where they're dealing with sick kids on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if there is a, a part of the fellowship training does involve pediatric palliative mm -hmm. care. So absolutely, if there's a need, I, we're happy to assist. That really helps a lot. Thank yeah. you so much. Um, where is your practice located? Okay, well, we have two different locations, actually. Nice. Um, Ventura is the primary office, and so it's on Loma Vista. It's uh, actually in the Medical Arts Plaza building, you know, where Grossman Imaging is. It's kind of on the second floor there. Perfect. Um, and then we actually have a new location uh, in Camarillo. So it's at the Centers for Family Health Santa Rosa site in Camarillo. What a lovely spot. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on you. that new We're, adventure. We are very excited to be able to serve that, you know, geographic location, so. That sounds wonderful, thank you so much. You know, uh, another aspect of who you are is what your outside interests or hobbies. I mean, are you like a skydiver or anything <laughs> like that? I know, no, I, uh, I'm i not, although, uh, you know, I did get uh, a skydiving um, a voucher for Christmas, <laughs> which I haven't <laughs> used actually, no, no joke. Um, <laughs> But I'm pretty simple, you know. I, I like traveling. Let's I haven't done a lot of that lately, as you might imagine. Sure. Um, running, playing games, dancing, spending time wow. with the family, really. That yeah. sounds ideal. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, good. Thank you for sharing that. Well, this is the the most fun part for me and for so many of us. Uh, it's the lighter part of of our whole interview that allows us to kind of get a better perspective of who you are, your personality, and we call it this or that. We're gonna start easy. Okay. And you just have to allow stream of consciousness <laughs> responses. Okay. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Ah. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. <laughs> <laughs> Time machine or magic wand? Hmm. <laughs> oh, magic wand. Oh, I like uh -huh. that. What's worse, laundry or dishes? Dishes. Very good. Now, we're going to jump back a little bit. Skydiving or bungee jumping? Either. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean or mountains? Hmm. Ocean. Good. Yeah. yeah, that's why we live here, Yeah, right? that's right. Okay, for casual, sneakers or sandals? Sneakers. Passenger or driver? Driver. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> be in control. Be. Superpower. Be invisible or read minds? 
Hmm. This is actually a question that I get all the time from my <laughs> children. Um, yeah, I, I be invisible. That is great. Yeah. <laughs> be invisible. I just heard that. Thank you for tuning in to learn more about Dr. Matz. For more information on all the services and specialties offered at Community Memorial Health System, visit cmhshealth.org and be sure to like and subscribe for more of your community health system.